In 1997, I was about 10 years old. I must have been 10 years old. I was 10. I was 10. 10 years old. I was 8 years old. I was in my parents' living room when it all happened. I was so emotional about the game, screaming and yelling, and saying stupid childlike things about the plays that I was forced to go upstairs and watch the game while my parents watched it in the main room. I remember I was at my house and I was with my stepdad, and just a bunch of his friends. I was just sitting in my family room with my dad just watching the TV and uh, the time was running out. There was three seconds left. The game was tied and the Jazz inbounded, inbounded the ball to Stockton. He got the ball and he was like way deep and I was like, holy cow, he's going to shoot it from like 32 feet. Uh -oh. Stockton, open three, catch! John Stockton! John Stockton. John Stockton. Sends the Utah Jazz! Sends the Utah Jazz. And John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals. John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals! That voice, that guy's voice, I will never forget. He scores, jumps up. Carmel gives him a hug, whole team crowds around him, I'm screaming, everybody's screaming. That was the first time I really just freaked out. That's what made Stockton a god in Utah right there, that like sealed his fate. Especially for the state of Utah. It was like we were validated because we had this team. They were so good and so fun to watch. I used to feel the name probably everyone. John Stockton. Along. Jeff Hornacek. And Brian Russell. Oster tag. I hated Oster tag. I don't know if there was any single person ever who really fell in love with Greg Oster tag. If he wasn't seven foot two, he would be somewhere doing something that had nothing to do with basketball. Howard Isley. Shannon Anderson. I got Big Dan Antoine Carr. Big Dad Antoine Carr. <laughs> Big Dog. Adam Keith. Chris Morris. Jeff Foster. Greg Foster. There is a <laughs> Jeff Foster as well. Greg Foster is there. <laughs> Jacques Vaughn. I'd say my favorite player was Hornacek. He was just the sharpshooter. He could nail every shot. He wore the knee brace, which made him look weak. But actually, he was as hefty as a bull. Yeah, as a 10 year old, I always thought it was so funny. He always say, like, Hornacek, he'd call him horny. He called Jeff Hornacek horny. It was just when I was reaching puberty and watching TGIF and starting to understand some of these teenager type words. That's a horny, horny good. Horny in the corner with a hooker. Horny in the corner with the hooker, he scores. <laughs> like with a hook shot. I just love the floater. That's probably the best shot in basketball. As a family, we really, really valued John Stockton. We just thought he did everything the right way. He worked hard. Uh, he's really unassuming. Uh, you'd have no idea he was an NBA player, and to me that was really cool. Well, he was, he was a quiet, good guy, you know what I mean? So he wasn't like the flamboyant, like amazing star. I remember the one shirt I had was when after Stockton beat the Rockets. It's a newspaper article on <laughs> printed on the t-shirt, <laughs> and it's Stockton <laughs> jumping in the air, and it's like, Stark since the Jazz, the NBA Finals. I wore that to school like probably three, four times a week. At the time, everyone loved Michael Jordan, but whenever the Jazz played Michael Jordan, you hated Michael Jordan. I mean, as a 10 year old, looking back, I seriously had so much hate for the <laughs> Chicago Bulls. I just hated him. I just remember hating him. I remember having friends that liked him and I hated them. Hated him. Absolutely hated him. I'd stand in front of the TV and, and block every one of their shots with my finger as they like tried to shoot. The Bulls were the epitome of the devil. Rodman was the complete antithesis of every single thing a jazz, a jazz fan would want. So it was like this perfect storm of a basketball antichrist with a bunch of Utah Mormon jazz fans. I hated Dennis Rodman. He was just such a foul dude. He would play the game to really get under the other team's skin, and he was dirty, and he 
colored his hair, and he was ugly, and he was unorthodox the way he rebounded, and he wore number 91, and he kicked a cameraman. We were the good guys, they were the bad ones. It seemed to me like the games were always kind of a toss-up. Stockton is the greatest point guard of all time, and Malone, one of the best power forwards of all time. That was the time for the Jazz to win. And they got shut down by the best player ever to play. Too bad that evil prevailed, I guess. I remember when I saw him like, you know, score that winning shot. I felt like he pushed Brian Russell. To this day, I feel like he still did. I just remember after we lost the finals for the second time, sitting on my couch, crying. They were clean cut. They showed up, they put in their time, they were really good at what they did, probably would use the word lunch pail. It was the talk of the elementary. At Elk Meadows Elementary, it was everything. Historic. Everywhere I looked was Utah Jazz. Wore a shirt, bought a blow-up chair, jazzy. I totally looked back and realized how spoiled I was, or just even the, just the players of, of John Stockton and Carl Malone. Motivated? We just had the best combo at the time. Unbelievable. You can't mention Stocks and Malone and not mention Jerry Sloan. Anything else you want to add? Uh, I love you, Jerry Sloan. Forever and always.